Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, a Pittsburgh Steelers podcast made by fans like you, for fans like you. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. I am your host, Joe Kuzma, discussing, well, Guys, it's been a while since I've just been able to talk to you and gals. Didn't mean just guys, guys and gals. Freely, openly, no agenda, no real notes. Well, there is an agenda today. I'm gonna, actually I got two things I want to talk about. I'm going to sound a little insensitive, probably a lot today. A little salty, a little bitter. Not because the Steelers have dropped two games in a row. I'm not mad at Landry Jones. I'm not mad at Mike Tomlin, but a lot of people are. I guess it gets under my skin. Let me tell you about my little drive home today. Okay, I drive through two different communities, and it's two different school busing systems. And I don't have a long drive between the office and coming home. And I, I come down this one road, and these people love to park all down one side of the street. And you can't go by this school bus that stops once Twice, three, four, five, six times stops in front of every child's door. These aren't even kids. I think these kids, they push lawnmowers during the summer. They look strong. Girls look like they aren't girls. Big, these boys, probably as big as I am now or bigger, they could probably like beat me up. And they get dropped off at their door. And I said, you know, I remember I used to get dropped off at the corner and this happens in both spots, by the way, both communities that go through. I have like a five-minute drive to work and back and forth. It ends up becoming like a 10-minute, 15-minute drive because I got stuck behind like two different buses. And I said, I remember when they used to they used to just drop me off on a corner around the block. You couldn't even see my house where I was dropped off. I could have been like killed or kidnapped or God knows what. And I said, man, you know, the times change. And guess what? It's no different with the NFL. See, I was going to tie this in. I wanted to rant about the little school bus thing. Kids could suck it up and go to the corner, I guess. Oh, no, maybe. Maybe some people don't like that. But that's where we're at with this CBA. They signed this CBA, I don't know, God, how many years ago now. I think we're halfway through it. These players don't get quite the contact that they used to have. And we're talking about players getting injured because the practices are too rough. But then you got fans that say, well, there isn't enough enough discipline because uh, you got Colin Coward. Yes, Coward. I like the word coward, <laughs> but that's why I like to call him. And he's talking about whether Mike Tomlin gets a pass. Jeez, you know, Colin, if you come down to Pittsburgh and you throw on a radio station like 93.7 The Fan, for example – or you just visit, just look at the Steel City Underground Facebook page and, and the Twitter and the people that respond to me, tag tag us and mention our names and all the writers and everybody else that's on Team SCU over here. And there's just some, there's some not so kind things that are said about the Pittsburgh Steelers and particularly Mike Tomlin and coaching. And they want to say, you know, and this is skewed too because teams can be 0-1 or 0-2 and, and beat Pittsburgh. They say he's 9-22 against losing teams. Why do they play down the losing teams? Well, Big Ben on his Ben Roethlisberger radio show the other day, he says, maybe teams play up to us. They want to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. Our team kind of agrees with that. A lot of people hate the Pittsburgh Steelers, just the same way we hate the New England Patriots. But if you're in that bubble, Pittsburgh or Boston, you don't realize your teams are probably hated because everybody around you loves these teams for the most part. You get a few people who don't pay attention to football or you get like one of these Cleveland Browns fans that hasn't realized that that team left Cleveland in the mid-90s and hasn't been back. But everyone that says Mike Tomlin should be fired, well, what about Bill Cowher? And they used to do this, and he used to do that, and he used to do that. Well, they used to drop kids off at the corner, too. That doesn't happen anymore. The times have changed. The times are a-changing. Should you a-change with them with Mike Tomlin? I, I don't know that I'm on board with that. I really don't. And there's a good reason why. A lot of people are going to say, ah, look at what the New England Patriots do. Uh, look, look at uh, Bill Cower. You take Bill Cower, for example, and you have Bill Cower's record through the first 
nine seasons that he's a coach, and you look at what Mike Tomlin has done with his first nine years as a coach, and Bill Cowher won 86 games, lost 58 of them. He appeared in a Super Bowl that he also lost. He was 5-6 and six in the playoffs, lost a lot of playoff games, didn't make it all the way, 86 wins. And there's a nine, there's a six game swing on the regular season here with Mike Tomlin. He's 92 and 52. So he's won, he won six more games than Bill through first nine years. Through now, first nine years, 92 wins. You know, in 10 years, he could be one, he could be one of these coaches, one in a very select few that has won 10 games his first 10 years as a head coach, 100 games in 10 years. You know, we don't want this coach anymore. Six and five in the playoffs. Now, I haven't won a playoff game in a while. You got T-bowed. That was one. But he's been in two Super Bowls. A lot of people, ah, that was Bill Cowher's players. Oh, hogwash. We've debunked that so many different times. Different running backs, different receivers. Sure, Ben Roethlisberger. That's who Colin Coward wants to say is the whole key to this. Franchise quarterback. Well, holy cow, Coward. You unlocked the secret to NFL success. Be sure to share that one with the Cleveland Browns. They may pay you for that information. Good God. Can you – does he hear himself talk when he says these things? Oh, it's mostly due to the quarterback and the quarterback's success. Well, no kidding. Because if you don't have a good quarterback in this league, you aren't going much of anywhere. You look at the New Orleans Saints, all the years that they were bad, they finally get in the Super Bowl. They win a Super Bowl. They have Drew Brees. Indianapolis Colts get lucky, but they have Peyton Manning. Look at how bad they were for years. They finally they get Peyton Manning, and guess what happens? But coaching is a part of that, too. You can have a bad coach with a good quarterback. You don't see it happen very often, but it does happen. I mean, you have, I'd say Phillip Rivers is pretty solid, but what have they ever done with the Chargers? So you could be a good quarterback, a decent quarterback, and go nowhere. Look at the New York Giants most recently. Very similar characteristics to Big Ben is Eli Manning. As much as that makes me want to throw up in my mouth a little bit thinking about that, I think Eli is very underrated. I may have said that on this show before. He's got two Super Bowl rings. He's been to the promised land a few times. He gets overshadowed by his big brother. He's had problems throwing interceptions. Giants uh, were a model organization just kind of like the Steelers. Very similar in a lot of ways several years ago. Some things didn't swing their way with injuries and whatnot, and then Tom Coughlin is left and et cetera, et cetera. And you're looking at, it's Eli Manning. And so where are the Giants at right now is what I want to ask. Everybody wants to make this big deal because we just had the Patriots and the Steelers, and they want to say, oh, Tom Brady, blah, blah, blah. They really want to kiss his rear end as they always do, and Bill Belichick, the greatest coach of all time. And they win without Tom Brady. You play in the AFC East. I get so sick of hearing about that. The Steelers playing the Baltimore Ravens is pretty much the Super Bowl for many years there, especially you get the tail end of uh, Bill Cowher there. Well, Bill Cowher, even in the early 2000s, Baltimore Ravens win a Super Bowl. Baltimore Ravens, what, win two Super Bowls? Well, the Steelers have this like amazing streak of pretty much solid above 500 play for the better part of this millennia already. Since what, 2000, 2001, 2003? I got to look at it. Told you, no agenda. I don't have the notes. I had a couple notes, but not all the notes. Steelers haven't had a losing season in a very long time. Under 500 anyway. And never with Mike Tomlin. Even during rebuilding years. I mean... Bill Cowher even went through this. He had some losing seasons. Sure he did. He did. Bill Cowher starts in 92, 11 and 5, 9 and 7, 12 and 4, 11 and 5, 10 and 6, 11 and 5. Then he has 98, 99 and 2000, 7 and 9, 6 and 10, then comes back, finally has a winning record, 9 and 7, 13 and 3, 10 and 5, then goes 6 and 10. There's that 2003. I was looking for it. Had to pull it up. I got it. 15 and 1, 2004. Those are very rare. Very rare that you just wipe the floor with everyone. But usually the competition in this division, and finishing out Bill's career, by the way, 11 and 5, and then the 8 and 8. 
after they win the Super Bowl, they go 8-8, eight and eight, don't make the playoffs. Competitive division. How many times has Cincinnati Bengals made the playoffs or won this division and or the Baltimore Ravens or both of them? And all three, combining with the Pittsburgh Steelers, all make the playoffs. You ever hear that about the Buffalo Bills, the New York Jets, and the Miami Dolphins? No. The Patriots play in a terrible division with teams that have been terrible for so long. When's the last time Miami's been good? I know, I know, they beat the Steelers. Big whoop de doo Getting healthy. Maybe they're turning it around. I don't know. I said that they're this year's Kansas City Chiefs. They're going on a little bit of a streak here. Hopefully they could give New England some competition they didn't have. Bills are the only team that's beat New England this year. They're going to say, oh, that's because they had a backup quarterback. Well, why don't the Steelers get that excuse? Everybody wants to fire Tomlin when he has Landry Jones out there. Landry Jones made some mistakes. They were still competitive in this game. It's not like they got blown out. They have a guy that is a guard playing right tackle. You have a guy that was on the practice squad that wasn't with this team until mid-August, Kobe Hamilton, playing wide receiver. And on the other side of him, you got Darius Hayward Bay. Good Lord. He had a touchdown, but he could have had two or three. Maybe if he did, they would have won this game. What would be what would be the conversation had the Steelers beat the Patriots? Because it's when they lose to the best team that all of a sudden they're not the best team. They're the absolute worst team in the NFL, and we got to fire all the coaches. It's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. I don't really – I guess I'm dignifying it with this whole podcast. I should say I don't dignify the comments, but eh, that's because, you know what, you guys can't really reply back to me unless you call in, and I don't have to play it. Let's be honest there. I could kind of rant here and just – Go on a tangent. You got Mike, Mike, Mike Tomlin, the youngest Super Bowl winning coach ever. Cowers players, right? Yeah, Cowers players were Troy Polamalu, Heath Miller, Greg Warren, and Ben Roethlisberger. I may have said him twice. He deserves to be said twice. Outside of that, receivers, the backs, your outside linebacker, your the whole linebacker core got got a makeover. Lamar Woodley and Lawrence Timmons weren't here with Bill Cower. James Harrison wasn't a full-time starter with Bill Cower, and he got cut multiple times by Cower's coaching staffs and front offices and whatever else you had there. The secondary were different players with the exception of Troy. So, I mean even even a different kicker. These teams change every year. Look at last year's Steelers roster to this one. Then go back to 2014 and 2013, compare it to this one. Go back to 2010, compare it to this one. That's what you have to do with those Super Bowl years. Even both of Tomlin's Super Bowl appearances, those teams were mildly different in, in their own ways. The, the personnel that were on those teams. You know, it's almost like you have a graduating class. It's kind of almost like college football. You get to keep some of them. You don't get to keep all of them. So why do you want to get rid of Mike Tomlin? He's over 500 every year, even when they're rebuilding these teams. Even through injury. How about that? Even through injury. You take a look at how many games Ben Roethlisberger misses versus how many of those games the Steelers really lose. Because everybody wants to say, oh, well, the New England Patriots win without Tom Brady. But Tom Brady doesn't miss a whole lot of games. And that year that he did, they still won 11, they still won 11 games with Matt Castle. Maybe it's the system. It could be the system. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna downplay that. But guess what? New York Jets were they, they were winning games with Mark Sanchez and playing in the AFC Championship against the Steelers. Does that happen because the New England Patriots are this great team? Hmm. Interesting, right? Very interesting. In fact, that year, they, the New England Patriots won that division. And they, they lost in the divisional playoff. They don't win every time, folks. They've lost conference championship games, too. I remember they were undefeated and lost in the Super Bowl. That shouldn't happen if they're the best and this is the benchmark you're supposed to put yourself up against. So, Mike Tomlin get a pass? I don't think he's getting a pass. I think he's one of the best that's out there. I don't think you're going to be able to do better. Certainly, other teams don't do better. I've heard the backup quarterback argument, too. Jeez, oh, man. I went on a rant on this, uh, a, what, a week ago? And I was talking about Landry Jones and who you could possibly get. He didn't look too bad out there. Nobody's Ben Roethlisberger. If, if you're able to just 
get somebody like Ben Roethlisberger. They're, they're not just standing as to quote someone I heard on the radio the other day, standing on a street corner just waiting for a phone call from an NFL franchise because they have this great arm. If they were, if they were there, they would already be on someone's roster and more than likely playing unless they're some development type guy, which that's what Landry Jones is. And guess what? Tomlin still does pretty good with that. What was it? Two and two with Vic and Landry Jones without Ben and last year and then other times where they haven't had Ben Roethlisberger in the lineup. And it's happened many times. They win with Charlie Batch. They win with Byron Leftwich. Whatever it takes. It's just unbelievable the, the type of things that some people say. I, I understand you get upset because they lose games. People get upset when they lose preseason games too, which is just mind-boggling. This is the regular season. They're still four and three. They're still ahead of the division. That isn't playing too good, too good so far this year. So there goes my argument about playing in a competitive division. Maybe it'll actually play to our strengths and our benefit this time. We'll find out. Ravens have been a thorn on our side. We get them after this bye week. But Ben's missed a handful of games throughout his career. You know, he was suspended in 2010, missed four games there, missed a game in 11, missed three in 2012, played everything in 13 and 14, and then 2015, missed games last year. And somehow, Steelers still make the playoffs last year. A little bit of help, but they're still always in the mix. And you look at those rebuilding seasons, you look at 2012, 2013, you look at all the other injuries that were there too, and the things didn't pan out. The guys that were always hurt, like a Lamar Woodley, supposed to be your franchise defensive player, getting the largest contract of all time. And somehow Tomlin still makes it work. He still finds a way. I don't think it's very fair to give him the criticism that he gets. Maybe playing, you want to say they play down the teams, and you want to say they don't look sharp. I would almost argue that, I mean, the Patriots came out with this. They came out in a victory in this game. They did not look very good. I think that gives us a lot of confidence when we have everyone back. This and Cam Hayward's just as big as anything else. We had the full offensive-defensive breakdown with the film over on SteelCityUnderground.com, just as I had promised. You can go check that out. And you can see maybe where there were spots. But this, this defense, I think the game plan was pretty good. I think they're coming around. I think Mike Tomlin does one heck of a job. I don't even know how many more times I could say that. It's just that thinking that a pl- that a coach like this that deals with injuries, deals with rebuilding, any lesser of coach maybe makes excuses, and he still does it without his franchise quarterback. So that argument's out the gate right there. Just throw it out the window. Any lesser of coach, four wins, five wins, Cleveland's working on the first pick. They have no wins. How come nobody's given uh, John Harbaugh? I almost said Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> he's in Michigan. Look what he's doing there. Think the 49ers are kicking themselves in the behind right now? Yeah, speaking of, let a coach like that go. Where's your program go? <sighs> right? But John Harbaugh, does he get a pass right now? Ozzie Newsom? Look around the league. Marvin Lewis. When's the last time? When's the last time the Bengals have won a playoff game? Wins are a rarity to come by, and the Pittsburgh Steelers—they have a model that many other teams in the NFL have emulated themselves after. Much like the Green Bay Packers, build through the draft. You see the Bengals trying to copy that pattern. You see other teams try to copy that pattern. Now the Raiders, maybe even the Browns, if they could ever make proper draft choices. It's not all free agency. It's not all just spending a big buck. But it's about right having the right people in place. And a lot of people gave a lot of flack for Todd Haley. And there's decisions. You can always look in hindsight. Should they have done this, A, instead of doing this, B, like fourth and three, field goal? You know, when those things happen, what if Boswell made the field goal earlier? That was like the 40-yarder, 42-yarder earlier that game. Maybe they go for it on fourth and three because they're not thinking about, well, I could take the points here, maybe get an onside kick, or my defense could get a stop, or we could get a turnover because we've been forcing turnovers. 
And then maybe, you know, it's an eight-point game, and I'm still in this. So he goes for a career a career long. Maybe to test him and see. Maybe to put him in that position so next time, you know, you, you learn by failing. Who knows the real reasoning? But I could see some justification for it. And I could also see the justification for people being upset about it. It's okay. You're not going to do everything perfectly. You have the game plan. The players also have to execute. Players have to catch passes. When they do not, or Landry Jones throws an interception, that is not Mike Tomlin's fault. Sometimes it's not even Landry Jones's fault. In this case, in this game, it was. In the preseason, we saw Kobe Hamilton tip one up, gets his hand on it, and a defender comes in and swipes it out of the air. Oh, well, it happens. You know what I mean by it. So some of these circumstances are out of the coach's control. It doesn't mean that necessarily Mike Tomlin should be fired. In fact, the Steelers only having these three coaches, being Noel Cower and Tomlin, over 30-plus years, is not only just a tremendous story, but it's just they get it right more often they get it wrong. Steelers are patient, and they're not necessarily complacent. It's not like Tomlin is putting up stinkers. We would like to see things more dominant, but this isn't the way the NFL is. This is a parody NFL. This isn't the same NFL that you grew up on in the Noel era where they could build these like all-star franchises and keep everyone together. There's free agency. There's salary caps. Now there's a limit to how you could hit with pads. We've seen it happen if you watch highlights or watch any other games. Geez, look at Brock Osweiler with Houston Texans. They never even moved past midfield on Monday Night Football once on a pass interference call. That's pathetic. That's not the Pittsburgh Steelers, even with Landry Jones, who completes the longest pass that the Patriots have given up all season. Folks, this is not bad. This isn't doom and gloom. This isn't a time to panic. All the injuries, they make me sick. They make me upset. Losses disappoint me, but you know what? Four and three, I see the light at the end of the tunnel, and I think a healthy Steelers team with this great coaching staff that they have, I forgot to mention Todd Haley, always a scapegoat, people yelling at him. Fire Todd Haley. Fire Keith Butler. We saw these same problems when Dick LeBeau was still here. Not like Dick LeBeau has turned around the Tennessee Titans into this great defensive force down in, down in Steelers South, I guess. Is what you would call it. And then Haley, you know, Ben's supposed to be a lot of people like arguing this too. Haley was brought in because to let Roethlisberger get rid of the ball a little quicker, have a clean pocket, not get touched. That's true. And then Ben has still been hurt. Yeah. That's because Indama Kong Su kicks him. Guy from the Rams goes low on him and gets fined. You can't prevent dirty hits. That's the same thing that happened to Le'Veon Bell. They're not injury-prone players. They're human. Dirty play is going to have dirty results. Unfortunately, these are the things that have happened to this Steelers team over the last several years, totally out of anyone's control, whether it be Ben or Bell getting hurt or Mike Tomlin or Todd Haley. And I guess that's my point for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I would love to hear some feedback from you on our hotline, 203-900-4SCU. We've got the bye week. Going to have some time to maybe do an extra bonus show or two, so make sure you get those calls in. Or you know what? You could send me something. Send it to me. Send it to uh, uh, myself personally on Facebook. Send it to any of the other writers that you might follow from Steel City Underground. And it'll come around to us. We'll address it. That's what we like to do. We love to talk about this team. We love to be optimistic about this team. And until they give us any reason to not be optimistic, and I don't think that they have. Miami game, pretty close to it. Eagles game. But there's been a lot of good this year, too. And I think they're coming around as soon as they get healthy. They have four days off. They return on Halloween to practice. We've already seen Ben out there throwing balls. Ladarius Green started practicing. They have 21 days to decide what to do with him. We'll see who comes off the roster if he's ready to play. Might be playing against the Ravens. I don't know. But Dupree should be right around the corner, too. Will that fix some more with Cam Hayward? Fix some of those pass rushing woes? It might. That's why they took him number one overall last year for. So we'll see, fans. We will see, Steelers Nation. But until next time, be safe, be good, and I will catch you later. 
We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 